with every stroke this week. The strawberry seals swim closer to the end of the 2014 season. Indian Valley Pool is the site of the Marin Swim League's defining event, champs. Everything the swimmers around the 10-team league, everything these coaches have worked for, leads up to the July 12th event. While 19-time champions Sleepy Hollow and Scott Valley again vie for league supremacy, finishing among the top three is up for grabs. That's in the seal sights, right now, in the deep end. The stronger the challenge, the better the response. Welcome to the Strawberry Seals. Hello everybody, it's another In the Deep End with Coach Barad and woo, I couldn't help but notice these new slick champs t-shirts, yeah. Coach. Ah, nice. wow, look at that. What's the game plan right now? I mean, you only got a matter of a few days as we tape the show. Uh, are you tapering? Have you been tapering? Well, it really varies depending on the age of the kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with our younger swimmers, most of our 10 and unders, their recovery time uh, is so quick that uh, you kind of keep doing what we're doing with those guys, but it's a lot more focused on uh, just focusing on things they're going to do at champs. So we've kind of ended our teaching phase. So with our younger swimmers, we've treated the whole season like uh, an advanced swim program, advanced swim lesson program where, you know, every day we do a lot of drills, teaching oriented to fundamentals. This week we're going to be doing a lot more just focus on dives, mm -hmm. um, some sprinting and just, you know, solidifying what we've already learned rather than introducing anything new. With our older kids, we do do taper. We, um, you know, we never did a large uh, volume of swimming this season. We kind of focused more mm -hmm. on shorter distances in practice you know we did some aerobic base stuff but what, when we were working the energy system aerobic stuff it was mostly kick oriented you know so their strokes don't get sloppy uh, this week it's very minimal sprinting um, and a lot of uh, drill work and just getting ready for champs we'll be doing a lot of turns and then friday we have our special practice schedule the kids will basically swim one lap fast is the most we'll let them do, and uh, the rest of it's just going to be easy swimming to loosen up for champs. As far as actual how champs will go, I mean, it's 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 a long day. You got the young kids in the morning, you got the older kids in the afternoon, and ultimately, what is, I guess, kind of the difference maker in this is you got ten teams all vying for points. I. Uh, you know, that's hard to say. So the individual swims are rewarded disproportionately mm -hmm. compared, like in a normal meet, relays take a, a bigger share of the points mm -hmm. than they do at championships. Um, so relays are important, but you know, even the last place relay will score at champs. So you know, one big thing there is to make sure no relays get disqualified. Oh. So if you're a relay swimmer, no false starts on Saturday, because <laughs> um, that that that's that's uh, you know your automatic points if you finish at champs mm -hmm. on the relays. Um, with regards to the individuals, uh, you know, it's just the kids swimming their best. Like it, there's so much going on. There's so many kids at the meet. Some kids are going to be at the top of their game. Other kids will be off. So you can't really predict what's going to happen. Depth tends to pay off well at championships in terms of relative ranking. But uh, honestly, I'm a lot less concerned with what place we get than, you know, if we can continue our, you know, good percentage of best times. Because at this point in the season, we, we have a cumulative, uh, we're, you know, over 39%, just brushing on 40. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if we can go upwards of, you know, 45, 50% best times, we might be able to break through that barrier um, of going 40% best times for the season. My goal was 30% to have cumulative. So 
I think the kids are going to exceed that, um, and the question will be about how much. So that's really, I'm hoping we get a championship meet where we can go, you know, above our goal of 30%, but, you know, hopefully get above that and kind of get a gold standard of best times, which is getting over 40%. All right, we're going to stop it right there. We're going to pause for a quick break. We'll be right back. And when we come back, technology in coaching. I saw the coach in his sessions break out a little software that really piqued my, and it will, your interest as well. Don't move. You are watching In the Deep End on Strawberry Seals. Com. Hey, SEALs parents, why wait? Go online and order your banquet raffle tickets today. Fabulous prizes are up for grabs. How about a pool party at Strawberry Wreck? How about gift cards to Spa, Arch Rival, Pasta Pomodoro, Athleta, nothing but cakes, and more? You have a shot at a print by our president, Eric Zener. So go to strawberryseals.com, register. Prizes will be drawn at the team banquet July 13th. Welcome back to In the Deep End with Coach Murad. And I saw something interesting in a series of your one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. You broke out your phone, pulled up some software, were able to actually split the screen with the swimmer right there on the spot and with maybe more an established swimmer comparing the two and right away it made a difference. Yeah, Explain it's, that. Um, it's amazing these days what you can do with off the shelf technology. You know, I was using a, a $5 app um, that I got from the Play Store um, and YouTube videos, uh, you know, of, of Olympic swimmers and other, uh, other swimmers swimming, you know, a lot of underwater shots. Mm -hmm. um, and comparing specific aspects of the stroke so you can load up a side by side and you know match the frames so that either the kids are the same part in the stroke cycle and point out the similarities and differences so you want to make sure your hips get up as you reach out and then drive down as you pull it stretch out on the last bit instead of trying to enter early and shoot the hand we want to get the hips instead of bouncing we want our hips to roll you, you could explain it on deck and the kids tend to get it, but the visual reinforcement really helps. Also, it, it, I think it makes kids pretty excited when they see an Olympic swimmer and they see that they're doing some of the things mm -hmm. they're doing in the water. And then they have other aspects of the technique that they aspire to accomplish. Uh, you know, when you get to see a swimmer at that level, I think it just makes it more interesting for the kids. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, there's a lot responded. more credibility to what you're saying if you could say, look, this is what we're going for, and these are the people who are doing it. Yeah, that's cool, because, I mean, the kids watched it, and it looked like they just picked up on it right away. And as I understand it, down the road, you're looking for technology to get even more incorporated in your practice sessions, so right? The team is looking to invest in um, doing some underwater videotaping system, you know, something where the kids can see themselves swimming mm -hmm. um, but with the underwater view because right now we're kind of limited to what we can do with our phones and right. you know our tablets which is over the water which is useful but you know I remember being a swimmer and you know we used to go up to IVC and they they used to have an underwater mm -hmm. window there and our coach would um, my coach Warren Logger Pirates coach would tape us swimming back and forth and then we would go up to College Marina, one of the classrooms, and you know we use these really expensive equipment, which would analyze with you know he had the, all these dials and knobs to slow Actual it down. Film sessions, yeah, yeah. film sessions. Uh, and now you know for a fraction of the cost, you can get systems that can do the same but more. You know, so we we can do things like uh, you know with the coach's eye app that I use, you can draw lines. Uh, you know, point out, stop at a frame, point out, you know, like like John Madden, you know, with the whole football Breaking stuff. Up yeah, <laughs> exactly. You, you know, you can tell the kids this is where your hand should be falling, this line through the water. Um, so the team is looking at investing in an underwater videotape system. So we kind of expand what we're doing with the, the visual aids for, uh, you know, improving technique. And then we're going to add, last year we did Monday through Thursday dry land. Um, we're going to add a theme Friday uh, before practice rather than doing a dry land. I'm going to do a video session with the kids. So we've got a projector, going to bring it in to practice a strawberry, you know, set it up. And prior to pr Friday practices, 
the kids can see some, you know, film of Olympic swimmers and others and each other swimming. Uh, and we can use those same tools, but do it on a big screen. So I think hopefully that will motivate really good Friday attendance as well, because yeah, that's well, usually the down day during the week. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd help you out with the camera that's recording us, but if it hit the water, then that would just be the, that would yeah, be the, yeah. the, the very end. Hey, uh, there's been some inquiries about a coach's clinic later on in July. Well, we're, we're going to be running a stroke clinic for the kids, you know, for the people who want to get a little more swimming in during the, uh, you know, summer. We'll be running the last two weeks of July. We'll have, uh, um, you know, a clinic, and the details are to be announced. We're still working out mm -hmm. the times, but it should be something, you know, that'll run an hour to two with the kids, and we'll probably run two one-week sessions so that, you know, people who aren't present for one can do the other. Um, it'll be really basic, just, just a lot of technical work, get the kids into the water, but kind of move away from the focus of racing and stuff and working out and just working on technique. Uh, and, uh, you know, that'll be open to everybody on the team. Awesome, awesome. So folks watching, they can kind of hit strawberryseals.com and get the update on the coaches clinic later on this month. Well, that will do it for this edition of In the Deep End with Coach Marat. We are going to leave you with a word from a group of our swimmers as to why they love swimming and what in the world it does for them. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time, which will be from the Champs Banquet, July 13th. Well, it's fun and I love the water. There's a lot of thought put into it, like times and following intervals. And then I also like how even though you're swimming for yourself in your own times, you have, um, you're swimming for a team and I like love the energy. Well, you have a lot of friends that are boys and girls and you can really push yourself to do things that you never can do. My favorite part is when you just get up onto the blocks and you know you have that feeling, you know, I want to win, I want to get this time. Last week I got three best times because of practicing and it just makes you do it. A lot of the times I'll be swimming and I'll completely zone out. And I, I know some people who don't necessarily like that on water polo, but I just love to start swimming and then just stop and not really know how much time has passed and just know I've been in the water and I'm doing something I love. What do you love about it? What? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. What do you think about when you're in the pool? You don't know? Okay. What is it about swimming that you like better than everything else? You don't know? You're a woman of few words.